Hi, I'm Mano. This is my hardcore Iron Man. In this series, I'm going for a max streak at the Arch Glacier, where I'm losing my status. I noticed that even with the suck cape now, I'm still doing really bad damage, and the reason is adrenaline issues. I want to improve my damage by getting conservation of energy relic and also the ring of vigor passive effect. The stew boost from last episode let me boost for extreme invention potion, which means I can make this relic. I will guess around 150 hours of archaeology to get to this point. I'm glad it's finally coming to an end. Sadly the relic on its own isn't really worth using at the moment. I need to be able to boost from 117 to do a mystery in order to unlock more relic power. First step towards 117 is 116. We're almost there. This is also a big level because I can plus 3 boost to 119. That gives me the ability to use the Slayer Relic to be able to choose how big my task will be. Here's the Slayer Introspection Relic. This is great, I've never used this one. On my other account I just uh, always neglect archaeology. So it's nice to be able to use it this time and see if it's any good. Whenever I see a roar I'm always going to the Anachronia course. Working on my agility. Been using stamina potions from 79 for the full course. I want to do my Hellhound task at Cerberus Juvenile, because it's a good task, but I don't have access to a portal, so I need to kill Samurak to do the tasks quickly. Here's a tip if you don't have a portal, you can just use a group system to teleport there. It works for most bosses. Here's a fun thing, I may have the suck cape, but my damage is still really garbage. No curses, no overloads, bad accuracy. I can't even... I can't even mechanic skip the norm move. It's a bit embarrassing, but hey, what can you do? Look at the HP. I can barely out DPS the healing from the like the random 500s. It's tragic. I really need to get my adrenaline upgrades. At the moment, I don't even have adrenaline potion, so I can't do a proper rotation at all. It has been fun though, I gotta admit, this is probably the most entertaining normal mood kill I've ever done. And also my second normal mood kill. I don't see a point in doing under 100% enraged since the bad luck mitigation is so garbage. Yeah, look at that. 936. Horrible kill, but it was fun. 1.9 mil for such an easy boss. It's kinda crazy. Sure, the kill was 10 minutes, but with good gear you can probably push it down to like 2.5 minutes. It's time to start the Slayer grind. I'm testing some accuracy, see how bad my bull is. At the moment it's 36%. Decided to bring both top and bottom to get a bit more bull, because I don't want to splash them and get worse kills. And it's fun to practice a bit as well. With this skill I'm getting 100k dungeoneering tokens can buy the Charming Imp. This upgrade is a bit wasteful these days to be honest. Most of the time you just AFK or Glaze or Serum Mechanic for blue charms and then you can just area loot so you don't really need this thing anymore. This is a big thing for me but kind of boring in general. The clay from the traveling merchant I'm finally collected enough to buy the full artisan outfit. With this outfit I get the headband add-on. And if I add it to my daily jack of trades, then I can claim 35 noted soft clay every day. It's a really good thing to have, especially since I'm using 4 urns every trip, and I'm doing 3 trips a day, so it will supply every urn for my daily. And here's why I care about jack of trades, level 90 Erlor. This means I can stew boost to overloads, but I, don't, I can't make the combo on some kind of not really bothered to make any at the moment. I forgot to mention it earlier, but the Sacrifice Scrimshaw is really good here. Gives you extra 5000 Slay XP every kill. But yeah, there's 89 Slayer. Decided it was time to try to get good. I added a couple switches to my Vuln debuff. Looks like it needs some practice, but I'll stick to it. I won't perfect it if I give up early. That's the last ever lap for this series. 500 codex pages. 
I didn't get any totem pieces, but whatever, I'm not gonna stay around for those. This was not a fun grind, but it took 39 laps at like six and a half minutes each or something. Here's the double surge codex coming in. It's so nice to be able to move wave more freely. Gotta remember to attune the movement, set it to one so you can spam click more. Here's a big farming level coming in, 92. This is a huge XP boost. Let me put dragons in the large pen. It's 100k XP every dragon. I think it's maybe like once a week, something like that. The way you get food for the dragons on an Iron Man is just to set your kingdom to fishing. Let's hand into Mangrums. I think it will, yeah, one first 62k and then 251k. Big XP drop. It's a really nice method to level up divination. I've been sending out these research missions ever since I got 115. Just spamming them. But yeah, this is the last one, finally. 117 archaeology. Done. Can now boost plus 3 for 120 to get the 650 relic power. It's a huge unlock for PVM to do more damage. There it is. The biggest time kit of the entire goal. Plus 150 power. I'll keep the current perks for now though. They're pretty useful for Slayer. So I'll swap it whenever I need to PVM. I need higher melee stats for Vyres, the quest line. So there's 75 attack on my way to 78. I'm using horrible gear. But it works. There's 75 strength as well. Let's try out a new double search codex at the Cerberus Juvenile. Saves me maybe a second to run, but still I like it. And I'm gonna need it for glaze or pillar beam mechanic. My switches are not very good, but I'll keep at it. I'm gonna succeed one day. How about this time? I feel like I always click the gloves, but they're still never equipped. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Here's 90 Slayer. This is a big level. Gets me to Dark Beasts and also Dinosaurs. The base camp upgrade, new Slayer Master, and Slayer Trophy. Really good. Decided to buy the MTX Aura, Marjorat. Gives you 5% more damage. I want to use it to test my Slayer XP at the uh, Cerberus Juvenile. So I'll do a test run and see what the uh, XP an hour is. Done a few trips now. Feel like it's enough. I seem to be hovering at the same XP. 930. Yeah, around 900k an hour. And one third of that is Dungeoneering tokens. Just gotta remember to activate uh, Sacrifice Scrimshaw every kill. Otherwise you only get 10,000 every kill instead of 15. So it's quite a big XP loss if you're too lazy to click on it. Done with the Hellhound task. But finally got Abbey Demons. I'm preferring these because the hell on task are so boring. I can't stand them anymore. I need to do more Abbey Demons. I managed to get the last Slayer Trophy from the Raptor. The third one. This gives me an extra boost in Slayer Points. Another 5% for a total of 50. Got another hell on task. It's too good to pass up, but it's not gonna be fun. I'm back at Taverly for some summoning levels. I thought since my playstyle is pretty much just PVM focus, I should optimize my way of gathering energy. So here's 81 summoning. It's for the Nightmare Muspa for divination. Here's another big quest coming in, Fate of the Gods. Gives a lot of good XP. Magic, divination, slayer, summoning I guess. The agility isn't useful since I'm already 85 for the search codex. But a really nice quest can access the Muspa familiar. Get ready for a big divination XP drop. I've been collecting the engrams. Starting with 63k. And 708k. I love handing these in. So much XP. And there's 95 as well. Don't have to boost for incandescent energy but I'm still going to because it gives you I think it's like 12% more energy an hour this also gives me the option to prestige for the third time I forgot to record a second hand in sadly but yeah 
the Prestige gives me new cosmetics, the Echo Wings. And if you haven't noticed yet, I love ugly cosmetics. Some for sure equipping these. I think I'm going with the more obnoxious third Prestige one. Beautiful. Here's the last piece of the runecrafting outfit. It's a really nice upgrade for runecrafting in the Abyss because you can use more essence. I think the outfit stores you have 12 of them. So it's very good. If you're wondering, I stay in rune spam for the entire thing. 70 to 84 for the full outfit. Has another quest that lets me progress towards the glaze or gold. It gives me the Pontifex observation ring. Which is useful because I need a passive layer. I think... Oh yeah, it says the City of Sentison is the one I need. Battle of the Monolith is coming up. But it's really boring, so I'm going to do fletching the entire quest. Because there's a lot of waiting and time gate stuff. So yeah, let's see what level I get. Starting at 61. That was a really boring quest. But I'm glad I did the fletching strat. Got to 69 fletching. I need 74 prifts. Here's the City of Sentison coming in. It's very good for... Both the Shadow Ring and also new mage spells in the Ancient Spellbook. Using most of my lamps on magic because I need Spellbook Swap and also Disruption Shield at 90. Here's the Shadow Ring. It's very good for anything in God Wars Dungeon 3. Gives you a bit better drop rates and also some mechanics are a bit easier to handle. And also at Glazor you take 10% less damage from the basic attacks which is useful. I don't want to sign there. Here's the main reason why I didn't do Extinction Quest for so long. This part of the quest is so frustrating. I hate anything in quests where you can't move properly. Like search being restricted or dive or... This time you can't even run. I hate it. I heard it's to prevent people from glitching out of the areas or something like that. I don't know if it's true. It's the boss fight, but it's not really a boss fight. But yeah, if you're a new player and you get overwhelmed easily by mechanics, you can stand in this corner, you take barely any damage. Only thing you have to pay attention to is Saren. Sometimes she screams fire and then you have to move east or west. Well, in this case east, because we can't move west. But yeah, this quest is not very hard. I've heard a lot of people died here, but I don't know really how they do it. You can prevent a lot of damage by using Hellhound Familiar and also Desert Pantheon HP boost and also defensives like Immortality, Barricade I don't know if Reflect works but maybe Here's the quest done finally I get a bunch of XP lamps, 700k and I get access to the Weeb Dream some upgrades to my Pontifex Ring and I can also go to the Fletching stuff for God of War's Dungeon 3 I don't have I do have the fire making level. Fletching I still need to improve a bit. But I'm not making arrows because Jagex didn't want us to do it as an Iron Man. Oh and also the ring passive which is the main reason I did it. I'm considering prayer for the XP lamps. I'm not sure do I have any other skill I need. Farming is like the most time gated one but I'm not using it on that. I think I'm going Herblor. Yeah. That's a lot of XP. I love the, this part of the questing, but all the other stuff is boring. There we go. 92 herbal. I have maxed out my camp as well. I can't buy anything else because it's level locked. So yeah, I can just reset all this and put it all in leaps for herb XP. Back to fixing the adrenaline issues. I have a lot of tokens from the Cerberus grind. Up to 92 Slayer at the moment. Yeah, let's buy this ring. It's very good for ultimate abilities. Saves your dren. Let's talk to this lizard dragon thing. And there's the warp gem. And combine it with the ring. And now I have a passive adrenaline save. Here's another very good area that the quest gives me access to. I can build this herb lore station. There's also a couple other ones, but the skills are not that useful. This gives me 40k XP in Herblore every day. Combined with the Jack of Trades aura, I'm getting 100k XP a day. Feel like it's time to wrap up the video with the goal list. Let's take a look. Starting with the first biggest goal, 117 archaeology and all the relics. 
Then I got the double surge, which was a big. Also made progress on the ring passive, but I didn't really get there yet. Gonna mention real quick, when I started making these videos, I wasn't really expecting any views. And now two weeks in, almost at 100 subscribers. And so many wholesome comments as well. You guys are awesome. Thanks a lot.